Continuing to follow a developing story this morning, one woman is dead after someone drove into a group of protesters in Uptown. A group of people out in a continued protest over the death of Winston Smith when police say the driver of a car going east on Lake slammed into the people right around 11.40 p.m. Officers responded right away. Some were already in that area monitoring the protest. Several squads and ambulances called in. This video streamed to Instagram. And some of the people at the scene are saying this person is the driver who slammed into the crowd. We blurred his face as he has not yet been charged. But that is when police moved in. And we saw in the video as uh, those protesters took that uh, driver or took that person to police. We've now learned three other people were hit and injured. One was brought to the hospital in an ambulance. Two others went to the hospital on their own. Investigators say they are collecting evidence, but they tell us that preliminary findings indicate that drugs or alcohol may have been a contributing factor in the crash. Still a volatile scene in that area earlier. Christian, you were reporting there live when you saw someone fire a gun. Yeah, right. There was a small group of people trying to close Lake Street to traffic by diverting drivers to turn north on Hennepin. It got tense whenever drivers pushed back, but one in particular escalated around 5.15 a.m. with the person in that intersection you see right there shooting a gun to the ground towards a white vehicle as it drove away. This group of three to five people threw trash into the intersection, blocked traffic with cones, other makeshift items. Police arrived about 10 minutes after the gunshot, took that person into custody. The road was then open to traffic shortly after. Peace. This is the enemy's public. I am Brother Nasir. Brothers and sisters, are we paying attention to what's going on in the United States today? Do we really know what's happening? Now, last year, Memorial Day in particular, our brother, George Floyd, was murdered by a race soldier in Minneapolis when Derek Chauvin, a wicked demon, placed his knee on the brother's neck, murdering him for almost 10 minutes, okay? He had his knee on the brother's neck for almost 10 minutes in broad daylight. It was in the evening, but it was still broad daylight. A young sister recorded it and the look on his face, he had a very condescending, arrogant look on his face as he was doing it, actually thumbing his nose at the cameras that was um, recording him. And the people were pleading to him, telling him that you're killing the brother. And we had the very people who just got a law signed protecting them and making them a protected class of people. An Asian was standing there keeping the people at bay as Derek Chauvin murdered George Floyd. Now, this action sparked worldwide protest and um, a lot of the government officials, a lot of white supremacists, see, it takes a wicked people to see what has happened and justify it and not expect us to react to such a egregious, nefarious act on us by race soldiers and white supremacists, so-called police officers. Now, we go down to Florida where Governor Ryan DeSantis signed a bill into law on Monday, April 20th, that diminishes First Amendment speech and protesting rights. The bill increases civil penalties for those participating in demonstrations potentially causing those engaged in uprising or protests to lose their voting rights if they are convicted under its provisions. Now, this is something that black people shouldn't give a damn about. Who running for office anywhere 
in the in the United States that we should vote for and give an office. Who is going to represent us? Who represents us? So losing a damn voting right shouldn't even matter to none of us, especially in the state of Florida. Now, if Ron DeSantis is the governor of Florida and we have legislators in our particular municipalities down in Florida, if they're not going to DeSantis, telling DeSantis, we can't back this bill, we can't put this bill into law, that means they're with it. That means that they want black people to be oppressed in the state of Florida where our little brother was murdered by George Zimmerman, Trayvon Martin. They want white supremacists all over their state to be able to do that. And we can't say anything. We can't protest. We just got to take the oppression and live with it. Now, the legislation billed as an anti-riot measure by its Republican proponents would create new crimes, including making aggravated rioting, rioting a felony and mob intimidation a misdemeanor. The latter makes it illegal for a group of three or more individuals to confront others and intimidate them into changing their views. A provision that has has the potential to be broadly interpreted, says critics. Now, that's the old slave master mentality, not wanting more than three of us gathered at the same time because they feel that we may be planning a uprise or a revolt. You're right. You're right, but we are taught, those of us who follow the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, we are taught to never be the aggressor, but fight with those who fight against us. Now, during the signing ceremony for the bill, DeSantis tried to justify that specific provisions using questionable rationale while recalling a viral video in order to make his point. Talking about people who were protesting while they walked past a restaurant and people were eating, the people were frightened that the protesters walked past them. The protesters said nothing to the people that were eating because they had nothing to do with it. And but they said, DeSantis said, that the people walked past who were protesting and they were singing anti-Semitic slurs to the people who were eating. What sense would that make? And not only that, how would they know these people are even of the Jewish faith by just walking past them? So they walked past them while they were protesting. Forget, forgot about what they were protesting about and then just started saying anti-Semitic remarks towards the people who were eating in a restaurant. That makes absolutely no sense. But the worst bill to add insult to injury, Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill into law that protects people in vehicles who plow through crowds and run over people during protests. DeSantis signed a bill ending vehicle driver liability for hitting protesters, which sets up, which segues into what I want to speak about today, because last year, police officers were running over protesters and you can go back to Charleston 
where someone plowed through a crowd and a young lady was killed. You know, during a peaceful protest, somebody just drove through and hit someone and the person succumbed to the injuries. Now this happened yesterday in Minneapolis. People were protesting a um another shooting where a brother was um killed by the police and um they were protesting the murder of that brother when someone drove through about a hundred miles an hour and hit a sister and someone else. She's a sister because she was in it and, and she was with the protest. He killed, they killed the young lady and um, the people um, held the person until the police arrived. We have fireworks going on outside my home. People around here celebrate the foolishness earlier, not realizing what they're doing and what they're celebrating. They celebrate it early. Now, we need brothers to stop with the cameras. We need to start giving those cameras to the women and letting them record us swinging into action. Now, the scientists signed a law protecting people who plow through crowds and running people over during protests. Yet, if someone does that, they run someone over and injure someone severely, injure someone any kind of way, just drive through a crowd of people. That person is supposed to be dealt with on the spot. On the spot. The police will be lucky if they have someone to transfer to jail. If someone does that. Now the police are already trying to say that this individual was drunk and um perhaps high off some drug. Regardless if that is the case, a lot of our brothers and sisters are saying that the guy is a white supremacist. I agree. I don't, you know, I don't doubt that because white supremacists are really cowards. They're punks. See, they'll go and drink or get high to get the courage to do what they have on their mind. So that doesn't excuse the fact that he drove through a crowd and subsequently killed somebody. So being high or drunk does not excuse that because that's what you always do to get the courage to do what you do. Even with those sheets on, those night riders, they should drink Get on those horses, put those sheets on, whatever they do. Even in war, they get high to get the courage to do what they do. So being high or drunk is no excuse. Just like in Jasper, Texas, with our brother James Bird, when they asked him, did he need a lift? And he obliged them. 
they stopped to get beer. They started drinking. And when they got drunk, they tied our brother to the back of that truck by his feet with chains. And they dragged him for three miles until his entire body was torn apart. So it doesn't matter if the man was high or drunk. He did it to get the courage to do what he did. It doesn't matter. And brothers are constantly yelling and screaming on cameras when those cameras should be given to women while the brothers swing into action. We do that too much. I watched the video of a sister in the Karen going back and forth and the Karen kept calling the sister the N-word and the sister said, don't call me that no more. And she did it one time too many, too many and the sister slapped the taste out of her mouth. And then a big gigantic white boy, instead of breaking the fight up, he gets on the Karen side, start chasing the sister around and all you hear in the background is some Negro talking about I'm recording it. Instead of putting that camera down and stepping to that white boy saying, you're not going to do nothing to the sister, he's recording it like a little punk. Like a punk. That's a punk constantly recording stuff. Now, you can get it on, get it recorded, but you're supposed to be the one being recorded. Once a man get involved in a woman's situation, you're supposed to get involved too. Now, if he had caught up with that sister, he and he was just trying to intimidate her because he was close enough to grab her, but he knew she was scared, so he just went, no, somebody's supposed to step to him and tell him to back off the sister. But no, these punk Negroes are constantly recording, letting people put their hands on our women and children. They are using our women and our children as soft targets. Just like the young brother in Michigan where the Asian shot a six-year-old. All the father can say is he's irate and he's scared. That is such a slave mentality irate and scared why can't you be mad as hell why can't you be pissed the f off he's irate and he's scared because he said he don't know what's on the man's mind concerning his family What's on your mind? It should be the issue. What's on your mind concerning your family? We don't need permission from no one to protect our family. Now, this brother lives in an open carry state and he let somebody shoot his son and got away with it. He shot your son, your six-year-old. And you're talking about you're scared. When it's your duty and the law will back you for protecting your child. A six-year-old? We need to stop with these cameras, brothers. We need to stop acting like punks. I know brothers go to jail for a lot less and a lot silly, a lot more silly crap than protecting their six-year-old child. If there's ever a time to be behind those bars, that's the time to be behind those bars, but they wouldn't have locked you up. The father of the young brother who was shot, the six-year-old, is a coward. For no reason. He's a coward. He's a live, 
on your knees, Negro. And we shouldn't have in 2021 live on your knees, Negroes. It's time for us to close ranks and take care of business. Of course, not to not be the aggressor, but we fight like hell with those who fight against us. Now, when someone plow through a crowd and kill someone, we should deal with that accordingly. Right there, right then. Because the driver of that vehicle was a white supremacist. And he meant to do just what he did. The police were trying to cover up for him. But he meant to do just what he did. Kill somebody with his vehicle. But we, through the silliest things, like yell and scream on camera, acting like women, while our women are being abused and assaulted by our open and consistent enemy. We need to stop that. Enough is enough with that. Now, if a brother was doing that, you would say how he's a punk, and he is, yet you don't allow nobody to use your children and your women as soft targets. No. That's what they're using our women and children as, soft targets. Now, um, Diana Marie Nod, Nodjet, Nodjdek, Diana Marie Nodjdek. She was 32 years old. She was hit by a car and killed at a, um, a march. I believe she looks like a um, Caucasian woman, but she wasn't murdered. Murdered it was a white woman murdered in Charleston. She was standing up for justice for a black man who was murdered by police. That's what this white woman was doing. And she was hit by a vehicle and he probably did that on purpose because she would be considered going off cold. They'll do this now. They will murder one of their own for being off cold. With them, rather. She's on cold with freedom, justice, and equality. She's on cold with that, but she's off cold with the racism, white supremacist move. She's off cold concerning that, and they will murder some of them for being off cold. So we need to think about that. But she was murdered by this white supremacist, a white woman, who drove through a crowd of protesters seeking to kill someone, and he succeeded. It's a travesty, and we'll see what comes of this case, what happens to him, and what the police said his motives were as well. They're gonna to try to cover it up, 
trying to make it seem like he was in pain, but it doesn't matter because that's what white boys do in order to get the courage to do what they do. They drink and they get high to get the courage to carry these acts out. They're cowards by nature. They don't fight fear. And they're sneaky, they're conniving, they're wicked. And that's just the way they are, inherently. This is the enemy's public. I'm Brother Nasir. Like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section. Peace.